Hello there. It's time for most things Kenobi. I prefer all things Kenobi, but I suppose that's not the Jedi way. As long as it's not all things Anakin. Hi, everyone. Welcome to an emergency episode of Most Things Kenobi, a podcast about Obi-Wan Kenobi and only Obi-Wan Kenobi. Yes! (laughs) Yes! I'm your host, Lauren. And I'm your host, Leanne. Oh, my God! Clacks on alert! Clacks on alert! (laughs) It's here, finally! It's happening. We are bumping our Hera episode. She will come next week because finally, after months and even years yes. <laughs> of waiting for this, we are fine. We finally got the Obi Wan Kenobi trailer yesterday, and it was glorious, <laughs> top to bottom, glorious. And both of our phones exploded with messages from everybody. Oh, oh can I just say, for the record. I sometimes work third shift and I was on third shift when this happened. So I was asleep during the day, you know, so I can work at night. And when I woke up, my phone had just like, I was like, what (laughs) happened? What is happening? And oh my God, it was so great to see. What a thing to wake up to. Yeah. I was saying that I was like, it sucks. Leanne is sleeping. I know. All days. This uh, is the day. (laughs) Hey, it was, it was fun to wake up to because it did not disappoint. I just felt like I was behind by a few hours. You know, (laughs) this fandom moves really fast. Like I texted you that morning. That um, the uh, the official accounts, like the social media accounts, had woken up with yes. their hello there <laughs> tweets and Instagram <laughs> messages and stuff. But I didn't expect the trailer to be like right after that, you know? Yeah, it's just been like one, pe- like one thing after another. Because they did the Entertainment Weekly article yes. and all those pictures, then the trailer, then now there's new articles today coming yes. out. It's just a lot. It's a lot. And everybody, a, a very common thing I saw yesterday on Instagram with all my associates and friends, and they were all exhausted by the end of the day because yes. there's just so much feeling and energy that yes. happened yesterday. It was. But collectively, it was excellent energy. Everyone was really happy, and, yeah. and myself included. I, you know, because teaser trailers can go. They can show not enough. They can show too much. They can, I mean, yeah. they kept a lot of stuff hidden, which I'm glad, but oh my God, the stuff they did show. Yeah. Oh and the music. the music. The music. Yes. Because John Williams is back. John Williams, the king, the the master. Maestro. <laughs> yeah, maestro. <laughs> um, we got some clips of some of our old favorite music themes yeah. from Star Wars. Everyone was just like bursting into tears. Yeah, that was it the was... most common thing I saw comments yeah, the... wise. When Duel of the Fates, yeah, was I was just like, okay, so they went there, and I'm I'm this happy. I'm so happy. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but it's so dramatic. Like melodrama is Star Wars middle name, and yes, it was just like black screen. Cue the choral music. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> and. I noticed that the Disney logo at the end added some saber flair, like a yes. lightsaber cut, which took them long enough, but that was yeah, great. Right? Yeah. I mean, did they just come up with that or did were they only saving it? That makes a lot of sense. Were, were they just saving it for Obi-Wan? Because it's blue. It could I be hope his. So. It you belongs know? to him. He deserves the extra flair and flash. <laughs> yes. My God, and does Ewan McGregor look great. I mean, he looks haggard as fuck, but that's what we want. Who wouldn't from, be? Uh, after all that, his, <laughs> let's start with the initial line. It's over. We lost. Yeah. Okay. That was enough to kill me right there. Right. To hear Obi-Wan, uh, Ewan McGregor as Obi-Wan since, for the first time since 2000, the early 2000s, yeah. mind you, 
It was overwhelming. I had a couple people say, like, they're so used to James Arnold Taylor now as Obi-Wan that it was kind of shocking to hear Ewan McGregor's voice again as Obi-Wan. Shocking, but so perfect. Yeah. Because, oh, man, it was his voice. It was, oh, this is Obi-Wan's <laughs> voice. Like, <laughs> <laughs> But to hear those terribly sad words yeah. of the truth of it, that was sad. That was... So I already feel pretty confident this is going to go the way we're hoping. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Especially you see like the Entertainment Weekly has that picture of him sitting alone in alone? a cave, like barefoot with just a sleeping pallet and a pillow. It's just well, like, now, wow. <laughs> some people are hypothesizing or theorizing that he could be talking to Qui-Gon in that moment. And I hope so. That's what I was thinking. Who else I would mean, he be talking about? As in it, we, the Jedi, who else could he say that to? Yeah, and I know they can manipulate photographs to look however they want. And there was a noticeable blue tint to that photo, mm, which mm-hmm. I, I do wonder if, like, maybe a Force ghost could give that color. Or maybe it's just... Qui-Gon's well, blue energy, because he definitely... <laughs> yeah. Well, he can't be a ghost, I guess, right? Like, he can't be... Oh, yeah, no, you're right. It would have to be the energy of it, not... Yeah. They hadn't quite perfected that. Yeah, which is so funny because I just texted you a few days ago. I was watching some of the Lost Mission episodes and Qui-Gon appeared to Yoda as these twinkling lights. And I was like, they could do that in the Kenobi series. Absolutely they could. They'd save a shit ton of money. Because as you appropriately (laughs) said when we were talking about this initially, about how we were going to discuss this, put a microphone in front of our face and go to town on it, you said, I'm convinced that they blew the budget on the Kenobi show, and that's why all the other offshoot shows on Disney Plus have had, like, less than fabulous yeah. uh, appearances. Yeah. I think I think so. Yeah. I stand I mean, by the, that. <laughs> the, the trailer is cinematic. It's, it this looks is a, like a movie. It yeah. looks like a movie. And I I have... I feel really good. I feel... I, I have a good feeling about this. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it definitely gave me hope that the whole show will be what I really deeply want. I'm okay with not having my expectations met 100% because obviously we've been disappointed in the past and I've learned my lesson to not have too much, too much expectation. I would love, all I really want to (laughs) see is Obi-Wan being sad as fuck (laughs) and maybe as in uh, uh, Snark Wars, as they say, doing some handsome crying. (laughs) Oh, <laughs> check, check mark. I think uh, we're going to get those things. <laughs> yeah, if I get those two things, I'll be very happy for several years. <laughs> I can't argue with that. I would I would be just as pleased. Yeah. Those two things, that's all we're asking. Yeah. I think we're going to get it. That's all I need. <laughs> I mean, he's sullen in a lot of the shit that we saw. I mean, he is not happy, except when he looked out at little Luke. Yeah. It seemed he was content in that moment. It's all he's got now. It's all he's got. But how about some Phantom Menace Anakin flashbacks with that little Luke playing with his... Oh my God, Like doing a little airplane. pod racer goggles like Anakin. (laughs) This is... This is the boy who's going to grow into the man who's going to save the fucking galaxy. I can't at how perfectly humble his beginnings are and like how incredible of a human he evolves into. I mean, just that one shot evoked so many memories (laughs) and so many feelings. Such a little innocent heart (laughs) down there, 10 years old, sitting up there pretending he's pod racing or whatever he's doing. It's blissfully unaware that his father is literally seeking out every, yeah, (laughs) literally tasking people to hunt down what remains of the Jedi or anyone who's force sensitive for that matter. Yeah. Which, oh my God, the Inquisitor. I the, know. Oh my the, God. The, the Grand Inquisitor. I mean, huh? I, love, I love the people are complaining that his head is the wrong his shape. Head is, what is wrong? <laughs> Let me ask you a, an honest question, Star Wars fandom. Why are we having issues with the size of, <laughs> of our of our animation to live action characters heads. Why are we having a problem with this? They had a problem with Cad Bane. Oh, Get yeah, the his fuck face over is it. All, like smushed in the front. Like they do you do understand, right? They're trying to make an alien come alive on screen. 
I'm pretty sure. Like <laughs> People are arguing, though, that we had that alien in live action first. It's the aliens that Obi-Wan talks to on Utapau in Revenge of the Sith. The ones with the, like, scary fang teeth. What alien race? They're tr- They're being held captive by General Grievous, and they have the, like, Dracula collars. I have no idea how to pronounce it. Interesting. Payuan? It's P-A-U okay. apostrophe A-N. So who the hell knows, but... I don't know. That's but that's still, interesting. Like yeah. the proportions are, are totally fucked well, up with the guy's I, head. We're getting a fucking inquisitor and some and some sisters here, the seventh right. sister, the you know, we're gonna get some badass bitches going to hunt down. <laughs> I, I I'm just I'm just happy for that. Like the sister looks amazing. Amazing. I can't remember what her I number mean, is. Is she like the seventh sister or something? I don't. But... I actually don't know. I just threw the seventh out there because that's the one I'm used to referring to the most. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she looks like a fucking badass. Oh my god, I can't wait to see what her character does. So, like, I feel like we could just jump all over the place with everything. Well, let's let's try and get our let's let's get ourselves organized as possible <laughs> because we have a lot to cover. <laughs> So we just kind of like go through it a little bit, like step Might by step. as well. Yeah. I mean, of course, the first shot is of sand because it's, it's because be sand. In absolutely. Star Wars. <laughs> um, yeah. And Obi-Wan is riding a, a strange looking. He's one with the animals. He really yes. is. He's never not befriended a creature in Star Wars that, that I can remember. I know this creature's name. What are these creatures? Why can't I think of it, Leanne? Because there's too many to think of. <laughs> I read the book, though. I even knew the animal's name. Like, if this oh, is shit. the one from the book, it's, like, got a special name. Well, it looks like a camel. It does, yeah. Which... I wonder if they dressed up a camel. Like they probably they, did. How they dressed up elephants as banthas. For the banthas. I mean, I need a stuffed bantha. I said this before. Oh, that'd be so cute. I think it would be great with my stuffed um, salacious crumb. That's adorable. <laughs> You know, all the things from Tatooine, right? Yeah. The an- Okay, so I remember the animal's name from the book. What is it? He calls it Rue. As in Paul? <laughs> As in RuPaul? <laughs> Sashay away. Shantae, you stay, Obi-Wan. <laughs> Vader, Sashay away. <laughs> Can you imagine shit? And then he's overlooking little baby, little, little child Luke. Yeah. Skywalker being fucking all sorts of adorable. Yeah. Well, <sighs> first of all, there's that silhouette shot of him in the town. I yes. don't know what he's doing, but oh my god. Well, I slowed it down. So I went I went through this frame by frame. Okay. Because Very nice. <laughs> because obsessed. Cuz that's what we do and here. And it seems it seems as though I likened it it looked like he was slicing off maybe some food ra- rations or something. Mm. Um or maybe I can't imagine him like working because it would give himself away, but he does have to go into town and get food. So right. it looked like he was in an assembly line or a cafeteria line or some sort of line of like, and he was slicing a, it looked like the pink slime that McDonald's allegedly uses in their food, <laughs> which I mean, Ray's food from Jakku looked just as disgusting. I was so, going to say that actually that place and scene reminded me a lot of Ray. Right. Which she brought back parts and was cleaning them, you know? And, yes. Yep. Uh, yeah, it definitely was and, a callback to that to me. Yeah, so, I mean, food can't be good for the poor in Tatooine. No, I'm sure and, no one's And very... Obi-Wan's probably trying to lay as low as possible, so he's he's not going to go get the finest meal yeah. in town. Well, I just appreciate the lock of hair. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Hanging the, forward. The beard. <laughs> Although, we're getting a little tiny bit too close to attack of the clones mullet but i think <laughs> they blow dried the wave away from him this time instead of yeah. in there's so, no round brush involved no, here no this was an air dry i think they learned their lesson <laughs> Just, i mean i guess on tatooine there's no humidity there isn't so you can just <laughs> Just let it air dry. Everything can just air dry. <laughs> It'll be dry in two seconds. No problems. There's two suns drying everything. Two suns in two seconds. Oh, that's a name of a Star Wars porno. <laughs> Sorry. 
my God. <laughs> it, it should be. If it isn't, it should be. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what kind of porno, but... Doesn't matter. <laughs> doesn't matter. Anyway, <laughs> after we see Obi-Wan in the desert with Luke, and he's looking haggard, and Luke is looking adorable, <laughs> yeah. we then get shots of what appears to be the Inquisitor area the their palace they're on some unknown planet unless yeah. you know the planet i don't know it's just a water planet it seems like a spire in the middle of the water and ocean yeah i don't know wouldn't it be interesting if it was camino <laughs> well i i actually had this thought like palpatine would take over camino oh yeah and would make it like as a fuck you put his crew there yeah yeah, that's the kind so, of evil bastard he is, yeah, for sure. Right. Then we get a sad Obi Wan on the train. <laughs> yes, it also looks like it looks like the same kind of land train that we got in Book of Boba, Boba Fett. Yeah, so yeah. That, I really like that tie in. Of that. I, I like that. Um, we also get Poncho Obi Wan. He has now joined the ranks <laughs> of the other greats in the Poncho world. <laughs> yes, yeah, doing Poncho. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's the, a must. <laughs> the tat the Tatooine Poncho Brigade. Like he he so made it. Funny. He's officially yeah. made it. He's just, you know, maybe trying to get his Qui-Gon feels go- going. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. And then then there's like this shot that reminds me a lot of a scene from Gladiator of the townspeople seeing someone's feet like you see the bottom of the feet which implies like somebody's hanging as an example absolutely empire is using someone to instill fear we saw this in rebels by the way if you haven't yet now would be a good time to watch rebels because you're gonna miss a lot yeah there's some tie-in stuff that's gonna be a lot of important tie-in stuff and i mean we don't know the surprises that are in store, but judging from the trailer itself, like you're going to have to watch Rebel- Rebels if you haven't yet. Yeah, the amount of Inquisitors that we see mm, just alone. in this trailer yeah, yeah. imply that there's going to be a lot of tie in there. So there's also the dialogue. I think it might have started by this point where you hear the Inquisitor talking about how to capture Jedi. I loved that part the most. I think it was my favorite part of this trailer. The Honestly, if this is the caliber of writing we're going to get, I was just, as soon as I heard the dialogue, not the performance is great, but the written lines, I was like, man, I wish I had written that. That's so good. (laughs) They encapsulated what a Jedi was in like two sentences, like how you would find a Jedi. Yeah. The the Jedi code is like an itch. They can't help themselves. Yeah. And like their compassion, they can't help it. And to think like to have that used against you as a weapon and you know, Vader knows because he was one, like when he was Anakin. So and we all know that it's worked on Obi Wan in the past. Yes, hundred percent. Think of the Lawless with Satine. Think of Kadavo. They use your what you perceive as your strength against you as your weakness. And yes, that's it's so good. I love that, but it's also so heartbreaking and and frightening. Yeah, because. Think about all the compassionate people. They might not be force sensitive. They might just be good people who step up to help someone and they immediately get slaughtered yeah. because they could be considered enemy of the Empire number one. You know? Right, exactly. I mean, if you read the Ahsoka book, this is also happening at the same time that Ahsoka is trying to hide in that book. And she talks about the Empire trying to come and I won't give any spoilers, but there's a force sensitive being that she protects because mm-hmm. she knows that they're after and it's a child. Yeah. So. You know, I won't say what happens or anything, but they're hunting children. Yeah. Along with adults. It makes a lot of sense. I mean, we saw them do that in Clone Wars. Yeah. They were trying to get that holocron yes. that had a list of Force-sensitive children. And the thing that I, I'm i curious to see if we're going to see this, and I feel pretty confident that we will, that Obi-Wan is aware that he has to smother that part of himself. Mm-hmm eventually at some point like i'm sure he'll learn the hard way that like you can't be compassionate even though you're a jedi you're gonna have to turn that part of yourself off i feel like he doesn't care about protecting himself it's Mm -mm. luke Mm -hmm. is his duty and he and i there's a shot here that says when the jedi their compassion leads a trail they Mm -hmm. cut to owen 
Uncle Owen's face. They do. And I, I wanted to talk about that. Yeah. yeah. So Owen knows too. Exactly. Owen's well aware he's got to keep it under wraps. Well, and that's why I think he tries to keep Obi-Wan away from Luke. Mm-hmm. You see that in the comics, at least. I'm sure we'll see it in the, the show as well. But Yeah, they didn't get along, those two. Mm-mm. And for good reason. I mean, they're battling over trying to protect the same entity. Right. And I'm glad we're going to get some, I don't know, backstory on Owen and uh, Beru. Yeah. Uh, I think it's necessary because we only see them as old kind of... You know, caregivers in A New yeah. Hope, and then they're gone. So I want to, I want to see their compassion for their nephew. I, I hope we get to see that. Yeah, I hope we do too. I think that Owen is always a little bit stern, but I'm sure there's got to be a reason that Luke feels so protective of them. So they're, mm-hmm. yeah. I'm really interested to see how they're, if they're going to go into it. They might not. Maybe Luke will just be like a peripheral character, but. There's stuff in the comics that implies that Owen and Obi-Wan are contentious for a reason and that Obi-Wan has had to, like, save Luke's ass a few times Mm -hmm. because Luke goes out in the desert and does something Mm -hmm. stupid and either stumbles upon, like, Jabba's goons who are collecting, Mm -hmm. quote, water taxes from people or, like, runs in with the um the sand people. The other thing, too, is Obi-Wan is carrying one of the sand people's staffs. I didn't notice this. It's on uh, his animal, which I still can't remember the name of the animal. Oh my God, I'm so mad at myself. He has it strapped to the animal, so how does he come upon that? That's an excellent question. I'll be interested to see. I'm sure there'll <laughs> be some fast befriending. There is some in the book. He earns their respect at one point, mm-hmm. but that book is not canon. No, but Obi-Wan knows a ton of languages. Yeah. It might be a survival type deal like Boba Fett out of necessity, maybe. Yeah. Uh, maybe they give him the cave that he ends up living in. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> we've what's got real this extra est- cave. If no one's there, you might as well use it, man. <laughs> <laughs> How's the real estate market on Tatooine? <laughs> Welcome to the good neighborhood. <laughs> yeah. yeah, here's a staff. It went, it went well with the other outcasts we found. Dying by a pit. Oh my god, that's so <laughs> funny. <laughs> so, um, yeah, those poor sand people are picking up all the slack. <laughs> <laughs> they really are. They're the hardest working people on Tatooine. <laughs> totally. Jabba dies, and their whole fucking world is just like, oh, we got to take care of this. Oh, we got to take care of this. They're good people. <laughs> Believe it or not. So <laughs> misunderstood people. I would say. misunderstood. Yeah, and and so okay. So after all of that. We get into some shots of the Empire. Oh, yes. What? Eopi. She's, she's, it's an Eopi. It's I an Eopi. <laughs> it came to her. <laughs> oh, an my Eopi. God. Okay, forgive me. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it just happened like that. I watched it happen. This is how my brain works. <laughs> <laughs> well, now we know it's an Eopi. Okay, I apologize. It's o- Carry on. Obi. <laughs> wait, wait. I got this. Obi and his Eopi. <laughs> Obi-Wan Eopi. Oh, there you go. Oh <laughs> that was like a dad joke. That was bad. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I apologize. <laughs> sorry. Oh, Moving so on. Good. Yeah. I'm sorry. You were saying. <laughs> oh, I was just going to talk about the Empire, but that was that was way better. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. We get uh, we get shots of what appears to be a downtown looking like Coruscant to me, but it's a yes. totally different planet. It is. Yeah. They, than uh, Tatooine. And Obi-Wan's on it. Yes. And I, okay, so I'm interested to know if this is like in concession with what we're seeing or if it's a flashback possibly. And this is a bit of a spoiler. Some people might not want to know this. So I'm just saying this here. Today, Entertainment Weekly came out with an article about how Ewan and Hayden got reunited on the set. And apparently he was just on set, hitting his mark, ready to start shooting. And everybody on set was not doing anything (laughs) they were all just standing there like watching and he was like i knew something was going on but i couldn't figure out what the hell was going on and then suddenly vader rounds the corner and comes down the the street that he's standing on and he was like oh that's why everybody's like he hadn't (laughs) seen hayden in like 18 years or whatever it was oh my god i love that though yeah so it was great but they say that they do that's actually like a scene. It wasn't just a moment okay. for them. So right. they actually do have a confrontation, which I know a lot of people are very upset about that being a possibility because they don't want Revenge of the Sith to be undermined. 
I just don't, I don't know how I feel. I have to see it. It's going to be one of those things because I am so partial to both of these characters yeah. that if it's done well, I will be okay with it. If it's not, mm-hmm. I will voice my opinion. Yeah. I mean, of course, I get very frustrated when Star Wars undermines their Same. characters, which they Same. do kind of a lot, which is really they frustrating. Do. They do. But they do. I also think this could be fucking amazing. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm okay. So we had, uh, we'll get to it. We'll get, I'm going to get ahead of, I'm going to get ahead of myself. <laughs> I got to calm myself down. Okay. So the other thing, the other thought I had though about this place is it also very much reminds me of the space station that Cassian is on at the beginning mm. of Rogue One, where he meets that informant. Yes. And this is 10 years after Revenge of the Sith. Cassian very well could show up in this show. That is an incredible tie-in. I would he love may, that. Obi-Wan may use him because we know there's a there's a young Leia in this. Mm-hmm. Bale might be the only link to Obi-Wan because we know in A New Hope, Bale enlists Leia to give a message to Obi-Wan. So Bale knows he's alive. I mean, obviously, we know this from Revenge of the Sith. Right. He may know his whereabouts and things because they kept in contact. And Cassian was, was he the original, uh, what's the code name he uses? Ahsoka uses it? Fulcrum. Fulcrum. Yeah, yeah. I don't know because, well, Saw Gerrera used it first. Oh, that's it. Saw was the first. Then Ahsoka. Then Cassian. Then Ahsoka, then Cassian. And then what's his name from Rebels? Yeah, I can't remember. The the turn, the turncoat. He was a, he was a. Oh, 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 yeah. Oh, I'm not going to spoil it. I won't spoil it because we just told people to go <laughs> to go watch Rebels. And I know there's people who listen to us that have not seen Rebels. So, But we know that Cassian has been in the room with Mon Mothma and Bail mm-hmm. Organa. Mm-hmm. So it's possible mm-hmm. that he could be a go-between. Or, yes. I mean, there's a yeah. real possibility there. And I would be very happy to, to yes. put Obi-Wan and Cassian Andor together would be so cool. <laughs> and it would be good business decision because the Cassian show is coming. So exactly. Cross promotion. <laughs> Take our marketing advice. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> but Cassian said in Rogue One that he's been a part of the rebellion for a long time. You know, so it is possible. And I heard someone else, someone else uh, left me a comment on Instagram saying Kanan could be in the show. <gasps> oh. Like Kanan oh. and Hera could show up, which would be really cool. Okay, cardiac arrest. It just happened again. I bra- <laughs> I, I grab the wall. <laughs> You're clutching your pearls. <laughs> I am clutching my pearls. I'll take either. Yeah. Or put them all together. All and just three. I don't <laughs> kill care. Us all. Just, it's a party. It's a rebellion party with Vader down the street. I love it. So <laughs> <laughs> These are all great theories. Uh, well, we're saying them here first, so we'll see what happens. But yes, I am very interested in this spacey city, planet, whatever. It looks super cool. It looks a little cyberpunky. Yeah, like with the neon, you know, and the, yeah. and the low the low lights and kind of the seedy atmosphere and then Obi-Wan's creeping around in his hood, which, as I texted you, yeah. gave me big time Duchess of Mandalore episode vibes. Like when yes. him and Satine are walking around in their robes trying to talk to each other, but not appear as though they're talking to each other in Clone Wars. <laughs> that I was like, okay, I'm into this. Well, maybe we'll see him kick the shit out of somebody. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm for it. In the show. I'm 100... I would love to see that. But he, he he's gonna have to do it without a lightsaber. I mean, he's probably gonna have to bury that thing. Well, I think in the sequence, which um, the shot I'm looking at right now looks so Blade Runner e to me. Oh yes, yes, it's yes, so yes. cool. But there's a sequence where you see the seventh sister, whoever she is, she like jumps off a beam, and then like Obi Wan's hiding behind. Well. You see a person with a blaster hiding behind something that looks very much yes. like the Reiko Hardeen arc. Uh, and, insanely. Yes. And I got a screenshot of it with his head up and you can see the person crouching down with a blaster has a white collar and a hood on like Obi-Wan. Okay. So I'm pretty sure it's him on the rooftop fighting with a blaster, which is really... Well, I would love to see this. Me too. <laughs> and And he flips his hair back. Girl boner. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> this whole show is going to be that. We're That's be... all. The whole thing. Oh, shit. But so. Yeah, I'm, I don't know. I'm loving everything I'm seeing. I'm just very excited. <laughs> then we get the helicopter lightsaber. 
<laughs> that people refer, people refer to it as the helicopter saber, but it's the spinning double blade yeah. that the Inquisitors use. I was happy to see that. Darth Maul would be so pissed if he saw that. Somewhere out there, Darth Maul is fucking envious. <laughs> or like feeling like these Inquisitors are no talent ass clowns who That's it. can't That's it. spin their own lightsabers. Yeah. Amateurs. But <laughs> exactly. It's it was smart of them to do. It was smart of them to bring in from Rebels. Yeah. Because they'll market the fuck out of that. The next thing they're gonna sell at <laughs> Sabi's workstation or whatever the fuck it's called in 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 Batu, you know yeah. the the yes. the fucking lightsaber shop. Yeah, yes. gonna be a spinny blade. <laughs> you yeah. can pay extra for the rotating. <laughs> They'll probably it'll, it'll probably happen. So the words that show up mm. on screen between darkness and defeat, hope survives. Yeah, but the the person they show after they say hope survives is Obi Wan. Yeah, it's implied to be luke because luke is the new hope right but obi-wan is the hope that survives he is because without him yeah what do you have i mean there's leia there's leia too she's well protected luke right. is much more uh because but because bale's playing kind of a two-faced game but mm-hmm. he's he's the right person to play it but luke is vulnerable he's yeah. on the planet that anakin's from he's with family members who might know or suspect uh it's just this He's, I think he's in a more vulnerable position, and that's why Obi-Wan is the hope referred to. We see, obviously, and I've read this in articles, too, where Ewan is talking about the character, that, like, Obi-Wan's really in a bad place when they pick up here in the story. And we see with Alec Guinness that somehow he must make peace with the situation he's in. Mm-hmm. So, like, he's going to go through a dark period but like it'll be very interesting to see how he works through that and finds purpose and like finds hope because clearly he has a bit of a sense of humor still by the time a new hope comes around Mm -hmm. i mean the words themselves that show up between darkness and defeat hope survives that could just mean what obi-wan's going through yeah darkness and defeat but his hope which is why we love this character is that he perseveres despite all of this horrific shit happening to him to over and over and over and over yes and there is going to be darkness and he already said they've been defeated they lost i mean that would be a hard fucking pill to swallow as someone in the republic army you know a That's jedi they, like his character it's like it's on the massive scale of the entire galaxy and then it's on like yeah. such a very small personal scale as well that like not yes. only was it his best friend but also all the other loss that he in in that comes with order 66 you know he loses cody he loses rex he loses ahsoka mm-hmm. he loses anakin he loses all the jedi and the few that he knew that survived they all split up yeah i mean it's and you gotta go you gotta go silent yeah radio silent i wonder if he ever gets in touch with ahsoka ever again well in the book she tries to reach out to obi-wan and anakin through the force not knowing what happened right i mean right. She, she had this sense that anakin had turned but she tried to reach them anyway and it was like closed doors like there was nothing she was hitting a wall there wasn't even an echo of their force Which signature is why i wonder if obi-wan does like what luke does on octu where he just like mm-hmm. because if you are a force sensitive being and i don't know if inquisitors are all force sensitive but i know some of them are for sure mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you're like a beacon Especially after the Empire begins because all the Jedi have been killed out. So if you're registering anything in the Force and someone is looking for that specifically, you're going to be like an alarm bell ringing. And so it makes me wonder if he like closed himself off from the Force for a while because he can't really be a Jedi. He can't be compassionate. He can't do all the things that he normally would do to help people. Like he would have to just be a regular person now. Does he know how to do that? I guess we're going to find out. I think it'd probably be pretty hard at first. It would be very hard. That's a terrible, that's a, that's a, that's a transition that would have to be fast and not easy at all. Yeah. But if anyone can do it, it's him. Yeah. I was thinking about how if he's able to go through all of this shit and still find a way to be hopeful and Mm care for Luke, he truly is like the best Jedi. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And watching him just in this trailer, watching Luke really brings it home what happens in a new hope you know what i mean how he's he is completely okay 
with dying in that moment to save what he spent the better second half of his life protecting. I mean, it's it's actually quite peaceful and, and nice. And I think yeah. we're gonna we're gonna get to see how what happens in this show really lends to that moment where he just accepts the f- his finality. Yeah, you know, in human form. Yeah, it was his choice, at least at yeah. that point then. Yeah. And that is something that after seeing all the Jedi get, <laughs> what is it, Screen Rant or whatever said, they were taken out like a bunch of punks. <laughs> 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 like all of them shot in the back, basically. And like Not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Obi-Wan in that moment actually gets to choose how he mm-hmm. dies. And that to like a, a person of honor or like a soldier or samurai, like that's a very I mean, meaningful choice to be able to make that decision vikings do not consider themselves successful unless they die in battle with honor and granted this was not battle but it was on a personal level Mm -hmm. of like okay this is this is how i die this is who i die fighting it's appropriate and this is who i this is who i die for yeah which is appropriate i mean it's full fucking circle it's beautiful well and they're gonna have to find a way to like move obi-wan from revenge of the sith where he's like probably feeling really torn up and like what a horrible experience to really like fight your best friend and mutilate them and leave them for dead and then spend 18 years questioning all your decisions and feeling like possibly a failure but also like where did i go wrong you know these Mm -hmm. and then when he faces Vader in A New Hope, he's very, like, righteous. You know, he's yeah. he's actually believes what he's saying, that, like, you're an agent of evil. And, like, everything yes. you've done, it doesn't matter what your intention was. You've done mm-hmm. a lot of harm. That's pretty interesting that the character can move into that position. So this is where that's going to happen. So I wonder, yeah. you know, if the, the showrunners are really good, the Kenobi series has like a lot to sink their teeth into that could be really, really satisfying for the audience. And I hope they're brave enough to go there. Me too. This has to be a dark, we said it before, this has to be a darker, grittier show in order to tackle the things that await them in order to get us to that point. Exactly. And it will be, you got to bring people low. And I don't mean like, like completely destroy them we don't i don't need that in my life but you still have to show the character (laughs) getting like really low down and like being in like rock bottom Mm -hmm. so that when they transition back into their power it's really satisfying for the audience yes that's the way it will become meaningful (laughs) obi-wan i'm having i'm in my feels right now just you're you're talking i'm looking at him on my screen on the trailer like it's freeze framed on his face like it's just we finally got the goddamn trailer (laughs) it's beautiful so the trailer ends as it should have with vader's breathing in the background (laughs) letting us all know anakin can't let obi-wan have a moment (laughs) (laughs) he's gotta come in there and make himself known. <laughs> you can't have a Kenobi without a Skywalker. That's what they said in Clone Wars. And I don't give a fuck if he's in Vader's outfit now. Those two are tied together for the rest of their fucking lives. Yeah. And they're tied together in this trailer as well. We know he's showing up. We know Hayden is back. And I'm excited to see what they do with it. There's going to be flashbacks, allegedly, to Clone Wars era. There is so much. <laughs> I just, okay, so like when the Falcon and the Winter Soldier came out, Marvel, I was overwhelmed beyond words every fucking week with every episode, just because I'm a Bucky fan. I'm a Captain America fan. I was a fan of the show. I loved every moment of it. This, if I was overwhelmed then, this is going to be on an exponential scale unknown to humankind. And I'm going to need a breathing machine after every episode. I've heard a bunch of people say that they might actually die from the show. Like, so here's our promise to you, Most Things Kenobi listeners, is that every episode, we are going to do a review every single week until the show is over. Yeah. And we'll get it out every Tuesday, as we usually do. So I may not have the volume that I may have, like, initially, which is great for all, like, headphone users. (laughs) Um... (laughs) But I'm going to need that time to scrape myself off the floor, compose myself, and get on here and talk with you about it, because we're both going to be going crazy. I mean, this, hopefully. (laughs) Hopefully. I'm pretty sure we're going to have strong feelings one way or another. One way or another. I mean, (laughs) 
look, we are going to be honest. We're not going to like everything, nor should we. Yeah. But we'll critique it with, you know, a fair eye, I think. And we've, I think we've been pretty fair. Yeah. In our critiques of things. I mean, we, I don't give a fuck about the Inquisitor's head being the shape of Humpty Dumpty. I don't care. <laughs> Humpty There's uh, other things we need to worry about here. <laughs> yeah, I, honestly, I, I don't care at all. I really wish, though, they had just hired Jason Isaacs to play him. Like, why didn't they? I'm not sure. And I also would like to know the answer to that. But I'm sure there's reasons. I'm sure. But he's the voice of the Inquisitor in the show. Yeah, I know. And it just, he, he looks. Like, oh, yes. He's so, like, he's Lucius Malfoy. How can you get more frightening than that? So, like. Come on. And he has a much thinner face, so they could have just <laughs> left it alone. He's I mean, <laughs> more shaped like the character. <laughs> right. I went back for a minute when I was doing research for our Hera episode, and I found yeah. something I had totally forgotten about, which yeah. is definitely one of the creepiest things about Rebel is when the Inquisitor traps Kanan, like lures Kanan yes. using Luminara's corpse. Oh, like oh, ugh. that. Okay, on a, I I kind of love that. I do too. It's good and so sick. <laughs> it's so gross and it is perfect. It's like uh, that's an ability I didn't think was possible or possible b- to be on a kids show. But like, yeah. it was just creepy enough and unsettling. I'll say unsettling. It was very unsettling and so good. That I, I I loved it. It was one of those moments where while you're watching, you're like, oh, no. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, this is, oh, God, her face. Oh, wow. You know, and then I had to go to Google search images, image search. Mm -hmm. So I could get like a still of her when she turns rather like skeletal. Like a a corpse. Yeah. Yeah. I loved it. I love shit like that. It was good. They could do stuff like this in the show. I mean, they clearly have got some Jedi bodies laying around. I would love to see it. Just once. If they could pull it off, that would be insane. That would be oh insane. Dude. Oh I don't God. know if they'll have, I don't know if they'll have the balls to do it, but they did it on a fucking kid show, but it was a Seriously. cartoon. Yeah. So they could like control it a bit, I guess. I yeah. mean, they could in live action, I'm sure. I don't dude, know. We're going to get be, a lot of, dude, we're going to get a lot so of surprises. <laughs> I hope that's one of them. <laughs> the possibilities are endless. It made me feel very excited. I'm, I was excited, but really nervous about this show. And now I feel very excited. I, I think it was really well done trailer. I'm satisfied. Very satisfied. Mm-hmm. I'm, uh, I'm really looking forward to this. And all of our rundowns when we do them, because it's yes. going to be nonstop ridiculousness. I know. We're going to be so <laughs> tired by the time the show's done. with six weeks worth of material. It'll be a speed run of epic proportions. <laughs> it will be. But it's worth it. And I will say... It's going to be a great birthday present for me because yes. my birthday is May 21st and yes. this couldn't be a couldn't get a better no. gift than this. It's our it's basically our 1 year anniversary of the podcast. It's mm-hmm. your birthday and it's fucking Kenobi. I know. The best of all worlds. No, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. As you and McGregor says, that's fucking Obi-Wan Kenobi. <laughs> <laughs> He's back. <laughs> All right, everybody, that's it for us today. Thank you so much for joining us for this emergency Kenobi broadcast. Join us next week. We're going to pick up where we left off with our episode about Hera Syndulla. Uh, That is barring no other crazy Kenobi shit happens between now and then. So we'll see you back here next week. Thank you so much for joining us here on the Most Things Kenobi podcast. Remember to follow us on Tumblr, Twitter, and Instagram. And don't forget to subscribe on your favorite podcast player. And... Don't forget to rate us on Spotify and Apple, if you would please. Plus, you can always find us over at mostthingskenobi.com. So, until next time, my space twin, may the Force be with you. Always.